Alright guys, welcome back to a new video. So as discussed in previous video, we were talking about uh, we were going to create an account with a, on the MongoDB or uh, using the MLab. So now when we have a look on this website, the MLab, you can see that um, MLab is now a part of MongoDB. So even though when we try to create like a new account, it automatically redirect or link to the official website of the MongoDB itself, uh, the Atlas one, as you can see right here. So now um, I can also try to click on this to see um, this one here, the MongoDB Atlas, and we can try to create one uh, with the free account. Okay, so now um, we have already seen this before, and I'm going to create a new account. We can just start it from scratch. So now I can just um, click uh, close this one and I'm going to fill out all of my information right here. So you can see that um, when we get started, we don't actually require the um, credit card information. And now I click on this um, get started free. Okay, so now here is the step that we uh, need to choose by default it choose like um, 0 0.08 dollars uh, per hour but then we are going to try it out so we're going to choose with the starter cluster and uh, just uh, click on create a cluster and um, for uh, behind the scene you can see that it hosts on AWS and we can also choose Google Cloud or Azure as well so I'm going to go with the default one which is the AWS and here you can see that we can um, select any of these uh, locations. So right now my current location is in Australia, but I just want to uh, choose the American, uh, it can be um, this one, the West 2, um, Oregon, because I think that uh, when I did a quick research, it says um, whenever that there's new function or features, uh, it's normally come with this uh, West 2 so I'll just choose this one for now and we can see that for the free one uh, we can actually get like 12 uh, 512 megabyte uh, for storage and if you want additional like settings for the backup then uh, we might need to pay for it but I'm gonna do that and we need to give a name uh, the cluster name so I'm gonna call this as a node.js cluster so that what I'm gonna call my cluster and uh, I think that's pretty much it I can just click on the create cluster button all right so how now uh, you can see um, this is the um, welcome screen and we can see that this is like a uh, guide that we can just follow when we was uh, first start using this and we done this first step so now go with the second step which is the create your first database user so right now uh, as you can see that this is uh, using the sandbox which is the free one and next step here is to create a database user so uh, we can just go with here and also we can create like a new one and I just give it a name so for this uh, username I can just use um, my name Hong Lee and uh, for the password uh, I can just click on this to auto generate the secure password so here it is I can also click this just for demonstration and I need to take a uh, note uh, for this password notepad so this is my username and this is my password so I'm going to save this here and uh, we can select for the user privilege can be admin or read or write to any database so I can just choose the second option for now and click on the um, add users so you can see that the second um, steps are already done now go with the third step which is the whitelist the IP address so we can click on this network access and we create or add an IP address so here you can see there's two options. So one is the 
option to add the current IP address which is the one that we are right now say uh, right now I'm staying at home and I connect to my current Wi-Fi connection so uh, this is uh, I have a unique IP address so I can just add this so what it mean by that is that whenever that I try to just uh, click on add the current IP address nobody else from the outside of my home which is the one that not, not using my Wi-Fi connection but they don't have the access to access my database at all it's just like uh, working on the company um, Wi-Fi stuff like that so from the outsider they don't have the ability to uh, to access that and this is for the allow access from anywhere and for now I can just um, access from anywhere for now and uh, we can save this as a temporary whitelist I'm gonna do that uh, just click on the confirm so we've uh, finished the third step and for the fourth one here is the load sample data and uh, it's optional step so I'm not I'm not going to do that but you can actually do it uh, to see the sample data what it look like in JSON format you can do that as well and I'm going to skip to this fifth step which is connect to your uh, cluster which is uh, we are connecting to our node.js the back end so we can click on this button and it give us with this I'm gonna close this by now so uh, we can click on the second option here to connect your applications and you can see that this is the driver that uh, the node.js itself and we have uh, various languages uh, but I'm gonna choose this and this is the version so uh, we can choose the version 3 or later but I'm gonna go with the second one so you can see that the format slightly different and also the way that we implement is also different as well and you can see this is the example of the full driver and we are not going to do that we only use this uh, connection string only and I'm going with this uh, second uh, versions right here now I'm gonna copy this and we will put this link into our uh, Node.js um, applications. So now I'll keep this uh, open for now and let's now go back to the code that we previously working on. All right, so here is the code that we previously working on and I'm going to start the server and see uh, the result right now. So I'm right now inside my current directory and I'm just gonna do the npm start to start the server. right so as you can see that um, it's now listening on port 5000 and I'm going to open this inside my postman and when I try to hit this see if uh, we can actually get a response from that we can see that we get a response from all of this uh, JSON format so now what I need to do I need to install a package uh, called Mongoose so Mongoose is the database uh, object modeling tool that we can actually design um, and we try to also connect to our cluster on um, the one that we just created right here. So uh, we need to install this by doing the npm and uh, Mongoose. So here I'm just copy this and go back to our terminal and I try to terminate it and we can do cmd install or just i for shortcut and mongoose so now it try to install the library and just wait for a while and uh, see what's next right so now it has been installed and i'm gonna start my server again by doing npm start and now it's listening on port 5000 so uh, I'm going to do I try to um, create or import alright so now I have already import the mongoose as you can see right here and then down here I also put the mongoose.connect so uh, for this function it actually try to connect to the one that you can see that this is the cluster and the function try to connect that and the uh, right here you can see that there's like an empty string so what I need to do I can just uh, come here and copy this and I'm going to paste it right here so you can see that everything's 
the links is now here but what I need to do I need so this is the username I don't need to care about that but I need to do is to uh, replace this uh, password into the password that I just save it on my node right here so what I can do I can just paste it here and save it now let uh, have a look on the terminal so as seen on the warning right here, you can see that they recommend to use the uh, use Unify to ping as it is uh, a new server recovery and um, it's going to remove the current one in the future versions. And uh, now I have already imported right here, you can see. So it says the it's now uh, listening to the port 5000 and connected to the database. So now we have already done the first step. So what I'm going to do next is to create a new folder which is called routes because as you can see right here uh, everything or all the routes that we have so far which is this the the one the first directory the root directory and this is the one with the uh, api courses so you can see that all of the uh, routes is actually stay under the app.js so this is not a pra uh, best practices what we need to do is we need to create a new folder and store all of these uh, necessary uh, routes into a specific uh, location and before we getting into those things i just want to quickly show you one thing as well so right now you can see that everything that say my username and also my passwords is inside the app.js so uh, when i try to or i push the code to uh, say github or wherever then uh, the problem here is that everyone can just uh, see all of my password right here so this is not the best solution uh, that we can just uh, implement so there is one library that we can use which is dot uh, env that we can just uh, create all of this uh, and we can secretly store the information without post or without uploading the env file to the uh, github so nobody can see the actual password that we have inside our application and i'm not going to do that in this video we will look into how to do this dot env in the next video so now let's get back to our code and i try to create a folder and see you guys in a few seconds Alright, so as seen here, uh, I create a new folder called routes and inside these routes, I create a new file called courses.js. So here you can see that I import the express uh, required express and right now we no longer using the app uh the apps uh, dot get right here so instead of that i just use the routers and i declare into a variable so once i get that i can just use the function dot get and it's the same one so api causes and here i just send to see if it's actually working so it says hi we are now at the uh, causes route and we need to uh, export this as well so the next step here is I need to import it right here so um, we see what the code look like. Okay so now I have already imported it right here so um, this is the um, directory coming from here the route uh, slash courses and I put it as the route courses. So here I'm using the middleware so uh, this is the app dot use uh, slash uh, whatever the route that coming from the above that we just imported here so i just want to explain a little bit about midovia so say if we try to create an application with the authentications or any other some sort of um, middleware so first it going to try to uh, goes into the middleware before they actually getting into any of the uh, route itself so um, this is just like uh, when we try to do the authentication the first step here is to check whether this uh, user is actually authenticated if it is so then it try will go to the next step which is the uh, routes that we are going to uh, try to uh, access to and now here the same we are not uh, uh, doing the authentications but uh, we are using the middleware just to in case uh, we are trying to uh, create a route and we try to access that and here is the first step that it try to uh, to do so um, so here you can see that this is the current uh, location so now I'm going to open this up inside our browser and see uh, whether it's still working or not 
Okay, so how, as you can see that uh, the local cost of 5,000 right here is still working fine. But we, we want to test out the uh, Cossis route, uh, whether it's still working. So here's the uh, route location. And you can see that now we are at the Cossis route. So uh, I there's one small change right here. So rather than just putting it uh, as uh, something like this, I'm going to cut it. And instead of doing it there, just put it right here. So, so the point here is that where we, we don't need to care about whatever the current location right here is. So right here, say if I want to create like a new route inside that thing, so inside the um, API courses last, uh, and it try to show this message. So say if I am inside one more uh, directory, which is the say uh, ID number one and Right here, uh, I'll just do we are now in cost number one. Then I try to save it and we will go to this directory and see if it's actually working. So now here you can see that uh, we are now in the cost number one uh, with this uh, first ID right here. So if I do something like previously, like here, we need to actually go to um, one by one and then just add it. So this is not uh, how we're going to do that. And it's back parentheses, just put it uh, right here. And this can be uh, whatever that we can just put it behind the slash right here. So we have done um, a lot of steps so far. So now next step here is uh, to create a model. So which is I already created right here. So create a new folder called models and inside this here, I just call it as cost. So we try to create like a cost schema, the, um, the schema model. So basically schema is just like uh, how we are going to build the database and how it's look like. So in this case, we have like field say, uh, try to create um, the courses that we have previously. So we got like the um, cost, the tag and the ID. And here I already commented this out. And so right now we can see that uh, what we try to do is to uh, we can import it the mongoose and we use the function called a schema and we put it into a variable and inside that schema here uh, we create the cost and the type of the cost is string and also the tag is also string as well and I also uh, import one more of the new field which is the date I just want to uh, install so say if I try to make a post request and it also uh, insert the current uh, date and current time inside this field called date as well and eventually we uh, create like a model.export and here is the model uh, the mongoose model. So whatever that we put the name right here. Uh, so in this case courses, it will also show it on the uh, MongoDB Atlas uh, as courses as well. And here is the data that we uh, the cost uh, schema that we just put right here. So now go back to the app.js. So here uh, we can see that we have uh, the middleware and the get and I commented this out. This is the uh, connect to the database with all the information that we have so far. And uh, right now, so uh, this is the causes. Also, when we try to look into this, you can see that it's just a very simple. So uh, what we can actually do. So in the next video, I'm going to do this as a type uh, of require. So we can just also put this uh, just like validation that this is the cost that uh, is, is required to enter uh, for the tag and as well as the cost as well. So uh, this is just uh, I want to keep it as simple as it is. And the next step here is we can try to create a post request. So here, I'll try to do the post uh, router dot post and whatever that the data that we try to post it through the um, postman, we need to write the function right here. So see you guys in a few seconds again. All right, so now here is inside our courses, the route courses. And um, I import the one, which is the one that we just created the cost, uh, which is the model cost, the schema. And I uh, call it as um, the uh, cost. 
Now uh, what I can do here is to create a post request so that we can actually send a post request through the postman and see whether the data can actually uh, send it to the database. And uh, this is the post, so this is the response and request. And here I create a new variable with these uh, cost objects, so which is the top right here. So um, I call this as the request body. Uh, this is the, the cost. So it will actually uh, coming from uh, the data will actually coming from the postman and it put it into the um, the cost and this is the uh, tag itself and also I call this as the um, my cost. So once we send that data, we need to also save it. So this is the save function and this is the uh, if it actually successfully save, then we can just put like uh, the console log dot uh, result so which can just see whether uh, the data can actually send it to the um, database and otherwise if there's an error then we can just do the console log and you can also see that this is the uh, response dot json slash uh, result so uh, we will look into this uh, in the next video i'll try to explain you with the static code as well so uh, static code of uh, two zero one two hundred or five hundred and we look into that in the next video and so here in this video we look into just uh, uh, the simple one only and this is I try to export it uh, the router as the module so now when we back to the app.js you can see that um, I also commented the body parser so uh, when we go to this library you can see that it is the uh, node.js body parser middleware so what it tried to do it tried to uh, request the body in the middle before that uh, the uh, handler and also available under the uh, response um, the request dot um, uh, body so previously we need to do something like this so that we can just use like in a JSON format but uh, recently seen the um, the express it support that function by default the billing function so we don't need to actually use this anymore so we can just get it of this and what we need to do we need to use the app the express dot use and inside our the middleware we can just do express uh, all of these uh, codes and this is the express inside our JSON. So without these two line of codes, we're gonna get like an error and stuff. So here again, this is all the code that we've seen so far. And uh, let's now connect to the database. So here I try to uh, create in the uh, postman. So I change this to a post request. And inside the body here, I can just choose raw and for the type uh, i can just choose uh, json format so this is gonna be the cost name so i'm gonna call this as node.js express mongodb and for the tag i can just call it as node.js Alright, so we're gonna send this data. So I click on sale and try to click on the send button. Okay, so uh, this is actually uh, sending, but we cannot see the result. The reason is that right now we don't have any things inside this. We don't have any response inside here, so uh, we can just uh, check the console.log see if it actually sending this uh, response. So you can see that this is the ID of the uh, MongoDB, and this is the cost, and this is the tag, and also uh, with the date as well. And now let's check on the database, see if it's actually having this data inside. So to see the data, if um, it's contained that, we can just click on the uh, collections. So just wait for a bit. And now I try to retrieve all the database and the collections. Alright, so here as you can see that uh, here is the test it created by default and this is the causes and also the data coming from the back end right here. So uh, we posted this as a uh, Node.js Express MongoDB and this is the tag of the Node.js and this is the time. 
and you can see that this is uh, we done uh, the post request successfully basically this post functions and we can successfully connect it to the database and using the post request so before i end this video uh, i just want to show you another example which is uh, i can click on cancel and then uh, try to create like a new one so mongo express and then just zero two just to make sure that this is like a new data and we try to hit the send button again so here uh, should be fine we don't need to worry about this and now let's go back and try to refresh this to see if the data, second data is actually um, sent through this all right so now it's retrieving and we can see the records having two right now so which is this uh, this is the new one the notes.02 and this is the date of the uh, data that i submitted so i think that's uh, pretty much it for this uh, tutorial it's a bit longer than expected by the way um, i think i cover through all of this a uh, lot already so in the next video i'm gonna show you how to um, do some of the uh, password so right here the password is actually everyone can just see it and we just cure the password and we look into on um, how we do the status code as well as with the schema as well and we might also look into how to update the data uh, from this uh, code as well so that's uh, it for this tutorial see you guys in the next video